In this presentation, we will take a look at subsidiary ledgers related to appropriations, expenditures, and encumbrances. This is going to be the trial balance that we will be using. We are considering the items below what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization. We are taking a look at general fund type activities, and that's going to be the items down here. So these blue items, the light blue, those are going to be the net assets what would be the equity type of section below that the dark blue those are going to be the income statement or what would be income statement accounts for for profit note here that when we consider these accounts we have a lot of other kind of things that are muddying the waters down here including estimates we actually posted the estimates to the general fund estimated revenues and appropriations which are kind of like estimated expenses or expenditures allocated expenses or expenditures or allocated kind of resources and then we have the encumbrances uh, down below, which are basically a holding account telling us that we have these encumbrances that are going to be in place. We've assigned this money out, even though the financial transaction it hasn't yet happened to the point where we would normally record it as an expense or expenditure on uh, the financial statements. And therefore, we're going to hold it in encumbrances until we do so. So a lot of kind of messy business going on down here uh, in terms of the of the modified accrual basis. So one way we can use this and why this is a benefit is, of course, it does show the transparency. We're able to say, hey, look, these are the appropriations that we're going to put out. These are the estimated revenues so you could see it. We're actually posting it. It's very visible, although it, it's, it gets a little bit messy. And we can say, hey, these are the encumbrances that we are going to assign out. It's very transparent in some ways. However, it's going to be more messy in some ways. How can we make this easier to read? Well, one way is we can put these on as basically one line item instead of making more accounts and making more detail with with the detail of it and then use subsidiary ledgers in order to break out that detail in a similar way as we've seen for subsidiary ledgers for something like accounts receivable accounts receivable representing money that is owed to us oftentimes we want to see more detail about that more detail than would be found in a typical general ledger given that information by date we want to see this detail by customer who owes us the money that's going to be a specialized kind of subsidiary ledger. We'll do that same information down here. We'll put this information on the books at one line item and then say, hey, if you want more detail, here's the one line item. Take a look at the subsidiary ledger, which will have more detail than the, the general ledger, which will just basically break this information out by date. So that's our goal here. Now, when we look at the subsidiary ledger, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of having one subsidiary ledger applying to one primary account here, we're going to use one subsidiary ledger that deals with some of the expense type related accounts, including the budgetary account of the appropriations, the expenditures, and the encumbrances. Therefore, this subsidiary ledger is going to be more messy than we, we would see for most other subsidiary ledgers because we're basically taking a look at three different accounts, the detail of three different accounts within one subsidiary ledger, breaking them out by category. Once we understand that, once we realize that, not so bad bottom line of the subsidiary ledgers is that they are you know going towards the parent account or the master account of these three items so the the totals then of them should add up to the appropriations here this number and to the expenditures for the current year and to the encumbrances for the current year so keep that in mind if we keep that in mind note there's three accounts involved then we can break down these uh, subsidiary ledgers without too much difficulty so this up top is going to be the accounts that we're dealing with or some of the accounts we're dealing with with regards to the subsidiary ledger so this the trial balance portion this portion of the trial balance is going to be here these are the accounts that we are considering subsidiary le ledger we have the encumbrances we have the expenditures and we have the appropriations so we're looking at the uh, appropriations the uh, encumbrances and the expenditures we're going to break them out by category so this is going to be the governmental type of activities and then we're going to break them out by the activity we're going to say this was the budget that happened then encumbrances issued cost during the year and invoices uh, approved so if we consider the encumbrances then they're going to increase with a debit because that's the nature of encumbrances that's going to be the normal balance of encumbrances remember that encumbrances are not expenditures they're kind of like holding accounts that will be in place until the expenditure has happened or has been incurred then we have the encumbrances decreasing the encumbrances are going to decrease when the invoice is improved and in essence at the point in time that the expenditure is approved 
So when the encumbrance goes down, you would expect the expenditure to basically go up at that point in time. So the balance that we have then is that this is where the encumbrance started at. And then we had the invoice was approved. It went, it went down at this point. We still have 5,900 of encumbrances on the books that haven't basically cleared, haven't been converted then to expenses yet at this point in time. Then on the expenses side of things, we have uh, the cost during the year. We're going to say this is payroll. So the payroll item isn't decreasing the encumbrance. So when you see something like this and no related activity in the encumbrance, then that means that it didn't go through encumbrances. We didn't set up an encumbrance and then reduce the encumbrance. It went straight to uh, the expenditure as opposed to the second item where we have invoices approved where we, in this case, you could see that this had a related item going down here. So this encumbrance went down, not the full amount. There's still part of that uh, amount that's still there that hasn't been uh, invoiced or the invoices haven't been approved for. And then this is the related expenditure related to that amount. Now note that these two numbers aren't the same. And that's because this is an estimate and this is uh, the expenditure. Also note again that this number isn't the same as this number because there's still encumbrances outstanding. So we had an estimate outstanding. We've cleared some of those estimates. Uh, we, there's still some invoices that haven't that we expect to uh, have happen in the future. And then we have the expenditures at the actual amount, the actual amount being different than the related encumbrances. So then we're increasing the expenditures. This is the expense related to the amounts that weren't encumbered. Then we've got the expenditures that correspond to the decrease in the encumbrances, the increase to the expenditures, this being our balance in the expenditures. The appropriations then we're going to represent as a credit. That's the nature of the appropriations. That's the normal balance of the appropriations because appropriations represents like the budgetary account, which is the opposite. It's going to do the opposite thing as normal expense accounts. It's on the books as a credit, has a normal credit balance. And that, that way we can kind of take the debits minus the credits to get the ending balance. So then if we consider the ending balance here, uh, we have a running balance in essence. The running balance is going to be equal to the appropriation at first because that's going to be the, what we started out with, the budgetary amount. And then we're going to be issuing either, it's going to be decreased by either and both the encumbrances and the expenditures because the encumbrances are being applied out against the appropriations. So we've got the appro this amount and then we're going to subtract it by uh, the activity in the encumbrances which is going to be this amount and then we have when then we have the 422 700 the 422 700 is going to be subtracted by the activity and the expenditures so if we actually do this calculation i'll do it for one of them we start off and we could say it's a negative uh 489 800 i'll start off with a credit represented by a negative and then we're going to subtract out the activity for the encumbrances and the expenditures so we're going to take that and we're going to add to it because this is a, a debit positive. We're going to debit it 67,100. And that's going to give us the balance of the 422,700. There's nothing in the expenditures, so we don't do anything there. And then there's nothing in the next column. We're going to take this item. There's nothing in the cost during the year. There is something in the expenditures. I'm going to take the, the activity column, this column, and say plus 420,000. And that gives us the 2007. So that's still the amount that are basically budgeted for, appropriated for, that haven't yet uh, been incurred yet or encumbered, expensed or encumbered. And then we have the detail of the encumbrance, which is going down a credit. So I'm going to say minus 61200 or credit 61200, which is going to increase it to 639. And then the expenditure is debited. Again, I'm taking the activity, not the balance. And I'm going to add the 61700. And that gives us the, the difference of the 2,200 balance at the end. So if we read this amount, it's a little bit confusing when you first kind of look at it, because again, we're adding three accounts together, encumbrances, expenditures, appropriations, but it makes sense because they're all kind of related in a sense. We have the budgetary amount, we have the encumbrances holding account, and then we have the expenditures, the actual amount, which will typically oftentimes, at least in part, when they have been first encumbered, reduce the encumbrance and then record the related expense for it and then we'll break it out by category same type of thing for public safety we'll have to break out the same categorization with regards to the public safety public works 
uh, health and welfare, same process, same type of activity. We won't go through all of it. If you want to go through it in detail, take a look at the example in the Excel worksheet where we actually work through a problem like this, if not this exact one. And then we have the miscellaneous, same items. And then if we total this information up for uh, all of the categories, then we have the encumbrances balance here, which is going to match out uh, the encumbrances. We've got the expenditures balance, which should match out to the expenditures uh, balance. And then we have the appropriations, which should match out to the appropriations because, of course, it is a subsidiary type ledger.